Usual arty spots, yada yada. Don't knock down trees, yada yada. Usual arty spots, yada yada. Don't knock down trees, yada yada. Hi folks, and welcome to the Ace Tanker for the Birch Gun, the Tier 4 British artillery. Yeah, we just finished with the Lloyd Carrier and the Sexton and I moved on to tier 4 uh, to try and pick up the Ace in this tank. I have to say I ground through this tank without picking up the Ace. It was a tricky little bugger to pick up, um, but it didn't take me that many, that many games extra beyond the grind to to, before I managed this game uh, and um, I kind of kind of enjoyed even though it was a tricky little ace to pick up I kind of enjoyed the artillery um, it's got some nice nice things about it it's got the same 25 pounder as the sexton has at tier 3 um, but you know it's a tier higher and that means that the penetration which is not good on the sexton is even worse on this gun or on this uh, artillery piece. Uh, the uh, alpha damage is even worse than it is a tier three on the Sexton. Um, same, but because it's tier higher, it's worse. Uh, it gets the same AP with 92 millimeters of penetration, 180 damage. And um, one thing it does have over the Sexton is an absolute butt. Uh, but ton of, of ammo look at this I've got a hundred and twenty rounds of HE 10 rounds of uh, one type of AP 20 rounds of the standard AP which is 71 millimeters of penetration uh, so it comes with an absolute huge amount of ammunition which means you can spam this is an artillery that you can spam shot after shot after shot um, and the uh, nice thing about it is you've got the range the uh, gun has the same range it's got 150 meters range which means you can pretty much hit the entire map. The uh, turret is uh, 360 degree traversable, which means that basically you can move into a bush and basically just sit there spamming shot after shot after shot. And your turret turns 360 degrees, and that means you don't break your camo rating. Uh, it's got a very, very high gun arc compared to the Sexton. So it's basically the Sexton with much, much better gun arc and a lot more ammunition. Um, it's got a good reload, very, very nice reload. Um, and the accuracy isn't terrible. I mean, the accuracy isn't too bad as long as you let the gun aim in fully but in a lot of cases you don't need to let the gun aim in fully because the rate of fire is so good you can fire while you're starting to aim and then you can fire again while you're half aimed and fire again when you're fully aimed and, and the rate of fire allows you to do that um, as I say the alpha damage is not great the splash radius isn't great um, it's obviously an arty so it's uh, susceptible to enemy HE um, and the engine is not amazing, but to be honest, I found the, the mobility is actually okay, considering all you have to do is get the tank into a position you can hit the entire map, and you pretty much, if you've got one of those games where you don't have to move and you're never under pressure, I think the engine and the mobility are just fine. So, um, you know, I think it's a, it was a fun little artillery piece to play, but not fun enough for me to keep it, and I sold it after this game, but... Uh, yeah, we might as well start with the history because this has got a very, very strange history because what you're looking at here in the Birch Gun is the world's first ever SPG. You know, um, well, a lot of, some sources, in fact, most sources claim this is the world's first SPG. Um, now, I don't know enough about artillery to say whether or not I think that's true or not, but I'm, I'm just going to go for it. Most sources seem to say it's the first artillery piece because it was designed in 1925. And so shortly after World War I, before World War II was even a blink in, uh, you know, Hitler's eye, um, you know, this this SPG was designed. And, um, you know, most, most tanks hadn't even started, to, or most countries hadn't even started designing tanks, and the British were designing 
the birch gun, the SPG. Um, it was named after the Master General of Ordnance, who, who was a guy called General Son Sir Noel Birch, um, and became the birch gun. And uh, only about five of them were ever built. I'm not sure if that includes the prototypes, but only about five of them were ever built because it was the world's first SPG. And basically there was a view that, okay, well, World War I has ended, um, or well, at the time that no, it was World War I, but the World War has just ended. We're entering into a time of peace and the, the horrors of World War of World War I were so bad that it's very unlikely there'll ever be another World War. So why are we spending a lot of money designing new weapons of of war you know um, and besides this is this is no one is building SPGs I mean no other country on earth is building what we're going to call a self-propelled artillery gun um, so you know they didn't feel there was a need for this tank so it ended up being cancelled with just five of these tanks being built it remained in service for about six years with only the five uh, I call them tanks again I'm sorry I know some of you guys go crazy when I do that but there were only five of these SPGs built they only remained in service for six years and they didn't come with the 25 pounder so the first couple that were built actually came with an 18 pounder and and the later handful that were built came with a 75 millimeter howitzer but um you know obviously it never saw combat and it was basically scrapped after just six years so uh you know um basically britain and most other nations had no artillery at all until uh, well other than horse-drawn artillery up until world war ii and then they vastly very very quickly started trying to improvise spgs out of other vehicles but um this was a SPG that was way, way, way ahead of its time and was never developed any further than the five tanks that uh, were built. So, uh, but that's that's pretty much it for the history. There's not much else to say. Anyway, we are here on Erlenberg and we are going to go because I can't remember how long this game is. Is that the right speed? I'm going. I think I might be. It's, okay, replay speed times one. That seems to be quite slow. No, maybe it's normal. Yeah, it's definitely normal speed, but um, yeah, we're just going to go and what I'm going to do is swing around and as I say, the really, really nice thing about the birch gun is the rate of fire. I mean, you know, the shell arc is nice, the rate of, or the uh, shell trajectory and uh, radar, the length of fire, being able to hit the entire map is nice, but um, you could just spam shots and I don't want to hit a moving target and I go back to the looks and even though I've got a high shell arc I still have no shots on this look so I decide to go for the STRV. Uh, put a shot in and take him out for the first kill for only 45 damage so yeah this is a, an SPG that will see tier 6s uh, your penetration and your alpha damage really really suffers against higher tier tanks but I don't have to worry about that in this game because I'm a tier 4 in a tier 4 game so I'm top tier as artillery and you can see I can just spam shots the uh, shell velocity not particularly good that one misses but uh, wasn't anywhere fully aimed and we can just spam shots he gets taken out and that might have actually hit him if, uh, if he kept moving and hadn't been killed, that might have actually taken him out. So I'm wondering maybe I can do some damage to this T2 light if I splash him. Oh, he's reversing. So I can just spam another shot because this rate of fire is fantastic. And now we're under pressure on the 1-2 uh, line, so I haven't had to move my hull. Um, no one's putting me under pressure, so that's a shot without being fully aimed. Miss the Matilda. And we can just spam in shots here. So both enemy Matildas seem to be down here on the 1-2 lines, and that's not good. But uh, we don't have very many tanks up here, so now all my attention is going to be focused on the 1-2 lines, because pretty much all we have between artillery and enemy tanks on the 1-2 lines is an IKV-72. So uh, I've had to relocate because I'm not getting shots on these Matildas. They're hidden behind uh, buildings. Nope, still no shot. I readjusted, but still no shot, so aim fired before being fully aimed but uh, I'm going to definitely have to readjust my position oh never mind SAV M43 sitting out in the open and look he's at the very very south of the map I'm in the north grid square he's in the south grid square and we put a blind shot in and that hits him okay so no no shell damage but um, that was obviously a hit so Cool guys don't look at explosions, <laughs> so we take out the SAV M43 with a second shot, but I've had to change my uh, focus here 
because again we're under a little bit of pressure on the one two lines but thankfully some tanks have come back um so yeah there's going to be a couple of those cool guys don't look at explosions moments in this game if i remember correctly um been a while been a while since i played this and it's been a while since i've watched it so um but yeah okay we're just focusing we don't have much to shoot at on the matilda here but you can see the aim time is not great, but it's better than it is on the sext, and we can put a shot in. I should do a whole 36 damage, a whole 36 damage on the Matilda. But he's the most dangerous tank over here. Su-76M, maybe, maybe, oh, that one goes long. Maybe we can uh, do a lot of damage to the Su as well. But we've got plenty of tanks moving back, and now I'm readjusting my position to try and get shots along those houses. I just need a better angle of attack. So, just constantly adjusting the hull, constantly adjusting my position till I can get a good gun arc. Our good, uh, good, uh, line of fire is the word I'm trying to look for, the phrase I'm looking for. So, we've finally got a good line of fire on the Matilda. SU is back, but I don't have shots. So, go back to the Matilda. And we can put a shot in. There we go. So, 37 damage. Hooray! <laughs> you can imagine what this gun does against tier 6s. If we're only doing 37 damage against a Matilda. But, um, okay, SU has moved up, so we're not fully aimed, but again, we can fire. Not fully aimed because we've got the rate of fire. And while we're still aiming, now our aim is a little bit better. Uh, we can put a shot into the SU and set him on fire, and yeah, already switching my targets. So, SU, nice kill on the SU. Go back to work on the Matilda and 64, and you can just see the rate of fire here. It's one of the things that makes this uh, artillery enjoyable, I think, is the rate of fire. Oh, track for zero damage. But, um, yeah, we've got to get rid of this Matilda. And another hole 58, so... That's probably one of the most annoying things, you know, when you're getting hit by the Burt at tier 6, the FV, constantly. The Burt can do it as well, or the Birch Gun can do it as well, it's not just the Burt. So we'll go for a blind shot once again, and cool guys don't look at explosions, we take out the Matilda. Okay, alright, so things are looking okay. We're, um, the score is 10-11, so we're losing by one, but there are three enemy arty. We've got two tanks, two arty, they've got two tanks and three arty. So, um, yeah, things are looking quite comfortable, I decide to move up. Again, just to see whether or not I can get a different range of fire, but uh, M7 or M37 was last seen down in this area, so I decide, you know what, I'm going to go for a couple of blind shots. This is where he was last reported. M7 Priest takes out the Matilda, but um, okay, we're just moving forward, taking blind shots at where enemy Arty might be. And you can see the mobility here, we're doing 40 kilometers an hour. So while the mobility gets criticized, you don't have a lot of uh, horsepower to weight ratio. I think it's around eight horsepower to weight ratio, which means you do struggle to try to get up hills and up rises. Because it's an SPG, you don't really have to worry that much. It's all about getting into a good position. But unfortunately, we've lost our Matilda that went solo down the zero line. And now our IKV-72 is moving in, he's on full health, but there are three enemy artillery and one enemy TD. Um, and uh, they've still got a light tank who can do some scouting, so... Um, things are not looking as comfortable as they were. So once again, just going for some blind shots at where enemy artillery might possibly be, and our IKV spots them. So there is a Panzer SFL 4B, and again, a shot without being fully aimed, and unfortunately, we only do 8 damage, but IKB, don't be silly, don't be silly, don't charge in, just keep them spotted. So uh, fire at the uh, Panzer SFL 4B and take him out, once again, not looking at the explosion, already switching my targets to the SU-85B, get a shot in, but don't kill him. That is so unfortunate. The enemy M37 drowns. That takes a little bit of pressure off, but I'm on five kills. And there are still two tanks left on the enemy team, along with one artillery. And I'm just going for blind shots here, but... And once again, yeah, there you go. Cool guys don't look at explosions. <laughs> we take out the SU-85B. So uh, they've got an M7 Priest and they've got an STRV M40... 40L. Okay, so there are the two tanks left, and... I figure this is um, this is a tactical decision. I figure, okay, well, if our Panzer SFL 4B is sitting in the north, he's going to spot tanks coming across the north bridge. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to relocate down south. I'm going to speed it up slightly because this is quite a long period of inactivity, but I decide to relocate in order to come down south, and that way I can cover the south bridge because the M7 Priest was last covered or last spotted down here. So, um, I don't have Binox or anything like that on the tank, but, um, oh, and now our SFL decides to advance, and why did he decide to advance? I have no idea. He decides to go on the attack. I don't know why, but we're going for blind shots, trying to hit him, and we're missing. You can see that the shell velocity takes forever to reach the target, and our SFL goes down, and that means that this is my last chance to kill this guy, and yeah, shell velocity means I don't get him, so... Um, yeah, our, our, all our SFL had to do was sit in the bush and spot the north and shotgun whoever came in the face when they got close enough, but, um, he decided to go on the attack, and that means I'm now alone against two enemy tanks, um, well, one of them's an RT. So, um, yeah, this is where I decide to sit here. Now, I figure that the M7 Priest is going to come from the south, I figure that the STRV M40L is going to come from the north, so... I'm going to speed it up to times four here because I sit here forever um, just waiting for these to come up or waiting for enemy tanks to attack. Um, six kills, so I figure maybe I can get eight kills out of this. <laughs> maybe maybe I can get a, uh, a Radley Walters out of this game. All I have to do is shotgun the M7 Priest. He's probably going to be a one-hit kill. or the Yeah, it is an M7 Priest. He might be a one-hit kill if I can hit him on his uh, gun mantle or gun uh, upper super superstructure. But no! I'll speed it back down. Um, all of a sudden, okay, there's a tank capping. Now, I figure that that's the STRV. So now I've got to go back and defend. So going downhill, once again, we get up to 45 kilometers an hour. And I've still got a minute 20 to get back. So I figure, you know, okay, that's fine. But uh, maybe, maybe I should have gone back sooner. The thing is, I didn't want to be get caught by the STRV while I was moving north. If I went to relocate back up north to cover the cap, I could have run into the STRV coming south, but all of a sudden, now there are two in the cap. The M7 Priest must have gone up through the middle of the map rather than coming across the south bridge, so all of a sudden I thought I had a minute 20, and now all I have is 19 seconds to stop the cap, and this is where the low engine power, I'm struggling to get up this rise, I'm struggling to get my gun on target because I'm behind a hill, and I'm going to lose the game because I didn't take the risk and come back sooner. Firing blind to try and reset, but it's not going to work, and oh, it could have been an epic finish, it could have been an epic win, but... I made a decision to cover the south when I should have gone back up north. So yeah, the Sexton 2 ace tanker was a defeat. The Birch Gun ace tanker was a defeat, but they're the first ace tankers in the tank, so um, I'm always going to bring those games to you. And I sold this tank straight after this game, moved on to the Bishop at Tier 5, but uh, we finished up with the ace, we finished up with Top Gun, and a little bit sad, I'm a little bit salty, I made a bad decision towards the end to stay south when I should have gone back up north. I just didn't want to run into the STRV, um, and yeah, that, that was a bad call by me, but, um, you know, we picked up the ace, and that's pretty much it for the Birch Gun. It's never going to be played again, even though I quite enjoyed the tank, but we finished up with 1187, almost 1200 damage, 6 kills, and 557 XP, but because we picked up the Top Gun, we ended up getting a heroic medal, so we actually finished up on 903, 903 XP, but um, 32 shots fired, and I still had, still had about 100 rounds in my tank left, so lots of ammunition, you could just spam out shots we fired or we hit 13 pen 12 again not quite sure whether or not i did actually pen 12 but happy with the damage six damage six destroyed and uh, we made a profit of 1000 credits because i was running a premium consumable and once again it wasn't my first game of the day i'd actually finished the grind and was playing this tank for the ace uh, it happened it's done it's dusted it's sold but uh world's first spg or technically the world's first spg in the birch gun it's a tier four and it's 20 years older than the Sexton at Tier 3. I find that quite interesting, but thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.